and what's up you guys welcome 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 to the mango grove my name is krisha and this is today's bitcoin analysis video i have sean next to me today sean say hello good morning good morning good morning good morning good morning <laughs> we had a very interesting day yesterday we had the cpi data release that dropped and now today is going to be even better and why is that because you're going to see jay powell exactly i miss exactly. him it's like seeing your granddad you know every <laughs> Once, two months yeah <laughs> Granddad, what do you have for me this time? That's right. So Grandpa Dre Powell is going to be on, uh, well, it's the FOMC meeting, so he's going to be on the podium talking about whether or not he intends on increasing rates, decrease, decreasing rates, I wish, or keeping them steady. So today is the FOMC meeting. Actually, let's go on over to, well, the, um, let's, should be, first I'm going to start off with the CPI read, Sean, and then we'll move on over to the CME watch tool. Mm. Um, so the CPI yesterday came in at 4%, which is lower than the forecast at 4.1%. Why is it red? Shouldn't it be green there? It should be like, hey, that's good news. Exactly. Um, yeah, it's like some, I th some I sort think of reverse. I they got that inverted. Yeah, I, I, I think so uh, too, but they've never really changed it. So they've been very They're probably short the market. <laughs> Investing.com is short the market. <laughs> it's bad news for them. <laughs> so but what's, what's your, um, what are your thoughts on, on the CPI read and how do you think it's going to play in into today's meeting? I, I, I think um, overall, like the, the trend is what matters more for the CPI. And uh, it's been going down and down and down over the past months, right? It, it could have shot up uh, this time a tad bit, and um, the markets, in my opinion, would have overreacted. Let's say we got 4.2%, mm -hmm. right? The previous was still 4.9%, right? So you guys can see right over here, previous guys was 4.9%. But yeah, we did get a read that is um, lower than the for forecast. So we saw some volatility to the upside, and the markets realized that, hey, to be honest, all of this was kind of already priced in since we were expecting a lower read anyways. And the expectations price in the market was that the CPI is going to keep trending lower. And that was already priced in. So getting an actual read under forecast wasn't... Um, if you got a three handle, that would have been a different story. Now, what really matters is how is Jay Powell going to react to this, right? Mm -hmm. How is he going to react? And um, that's why we can move on to this tab over here where we have the targeted probabilities for the upcoming meeting. So um, how do you think this meeting is going to go today based on the information, the CPI information that was dropped yesterday? Okay, so guys, today what's going to be really, really important is the Fed speak, okay? The, the event after they announce rates. So essentially the press conference is going to be really, really important. Everyone's going to be really, really watching and listening to every word Jay Powell is going to say today because how he postures for the next meeting is really, really important because at the moment you guys can see, okay, right over here, based on this bar graph, guys, we have the market pricing in a 96.5% probability that he is not going to be raising today. Okay. Now, if he does raise, that's going to shock the market clearly because the market's already priced in for this, right? Market's already price, priced in for having no raise because of yesterday's CPI meeting, a CPI release. Yesterday's CPI came in lower than expected. So market's like, all right, he's definitely not going to be raising. If he does come in and raise, uh-oh, that's when the markets are, are going to have to unprice that bullishness, right? However, let's say he doesn't raise. What he says after is very, very important now because everyone thinks that he's either going to pause or he's going to raise. But there's another option. He could say, you know what? I'm going to pause for this meeting, but I'm going to raise next meeting. So he could use the word skip. Okay. He could use the word skip. And, and guys, I really think, and Kush, I was talking to you about this. I think that the central banks, the major central banks have been colluding on how they um, release the information to the public to give us kind of like a foreshadowing, foreshadowing of what could happen with the USA as well. So, for example, we've had Canada who paused earlier yeah. than um, the Fed did, but now they've started raising again, yeah. right? So it won't be too much of a surprise for everyone in America who people who are trading the American markets to be like, okay, you know what? Canada did it, Australia did it. They paused and then started again maybe the Fed does it as well, right? 
So the market is going to be thinking, okay, wait, 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 is he going to raise next time just because he's pa- uh, regardless of him pausing this time, right? So if we go on over to this tab right over here, guys, you're going to see that for the 26th of July meeting, we can look at the probabilities over there. And the market currently is pricing in a 61% chance that he raises next time. Even though they're saying this time he pauses, doesn't mean that they're done. The market at the very least doesn't think they're done. And I think, I personally think, that the Fed is deliberately trying to project that to the market. I think they've spoken to other central bankers and said, hey, we got to send the message out that just because we are pausing doesn't mean that we are starting a new cycle of a pause cycle or a rating cut cycle, a rate cut cycle, right? They don't want the market to get too bullish. They don't want the market to price in um, the end of the, of the hiking cycle. They want the market to still worry. They want the market to sit on the edge of their seats. And the market is doing just that. Okay. I personally think that this is deliberately done as part of their Fed speak. Because there's games within games. There's game theory going on over here now. Ever since Bernanke in 2008 pushed Fed speak down our throats. Well, this is what we've got to play now. And now I think that they want us to believe that they are going to only skip this time and raise next time. But they're going to skip next time too. Okay, so I have a question. Okay. Um, if if he comes out today and he basically alludes to skipping, um, ba- he essentially tells us that, hey, he's going to skip raising rates this month, right? This FOMC meeting, but the next FOMC meeting he does intend on increasing. How do you think the market is going to react to he- that? Like, is it going to be a bearish tilt or is it going to be something bullish? Like, if you have to really think of sentiment here and how people have been reacting, like... So at the moment, there's 36% of the market, you could say 40% of the market, who thinks that he's going to pause next time as well, Mm -hmm. right? So there's going to be a portion of these guys over here on the left-hand side. There's going to be a a percent of them who say, you know what, based on what he said, um, I I think that there's a higher chance that he may raise next time. And those guys are going to flip bearish, right? So that's how you got to look at this. However, um, I think what he's going to say specifically is, I am going to be very, very data dependent, hmm. okay, leading to the next meeting. So it depends on what data comes in, okay? He's like, for now, we are only looking to skip, and it is definitely a possibility that we raise, okay? Uh, so they are leaving the market. This time, the Fed speak is not to give the market confidence, okay? During the COVID crisis, they wanted to project confidence to the market and be like, hey, we are keeping rates for low. Uh, we are keeping rates low for a very, very long time. So go ahead and buy what you must. Do what you can. Have a blast, guys. They wanted the economy to to be kind of overheated to get us out of that um, rut that we were in because of uh, shutting down the economy. Right? right. 2008 financial crisis. Same story. Right. The global global economy pretty much came to a halt. Lending had stopped. So they wanted to facilitate that lending by saying, hey, we are going to keep rates low forever for a very long time. However, this time it's a complete, complete different story, completely different story. They're going to project. They're going to constantly project to the rest of us that, hey, um, we could raise at any time. We could raise at any time. We could raise at any time. So don't get too excited. Don't get too excited because inflation is running hot. They don't want inflation to run hot. Last time around, 2008 and 2020, they wanted to um, kickstart inflation. They wanted inflation to tick up. This time they want inflation to tick down. So they're going to project a different story to us. But smart money is going to say, we aren't buying your bullshit. Right. Okay, man, that's, that's, actually, <laughs> that's actually a really good sort of uh, thesis on how this is likely going to play out. Um, and now we can sort of move on to price action because I'm seeing something on the charts that could allude to if he comes out with the same, on the same path as your thesis, Sean. Um, I think the markets right now could swing more bearish than bullish. Um, so with that, guys, let's get on over to the chart. Also, also before anything, I noticed that many of you guys chimed in in the comment section. You guys really, really like this fundamental uh, coverage that we do. Um, so if you guys want more of this, do let us know in the comment section. We're reading each and every single comment, and we really, really appreciate everything that you guys do. Like it goes a very long way for us. So keep them coming. Tell us exactly what it is that you like, what you want to see more of, and we will deliver. Okay. So now as far as price action is concerned, 
And based on what you said, Sean, I feel like I'm getting a bit more confidence. Of course, we'll have to wait for more data. <laughs> I'm going to take Jape House uh, <laughs> spiel on that. But um, based on what you said, and uh, based on what price action is doing right now, I feel like there is a bit more swinging short-term bearish. Yeah. I'm going to be very careful with my words here because while I do believe that we're sort of getting into the macro markup phase, and when I say macro, guys, I'm talking about weekly, monthly timeframes. Okay, we can see these these intermediate downtrends in the meanwhile, but uh, mac we're getting into the macro markup phase. That's why everything I look for, any pullback, is short-term in my opinion. So as far as the short-term pullback, this is what price action is doing right now is telling me that, hey, we're likely going to see that short-term pullback, pullback. And this is what we've been talking about for the past, well, two days now, right? We're seeing that, okay, we're still very much in that. So let's actually get on over to the weekly time frame. This is the daily, by the way, also the daily is within its FVG zone, looking to come all the way down to 25K. But um, let's get on over to the weekly time frame. We noticed mm. that uh, we broke into the weekly FVG, and that's why I'm looking for continuation to the downside. Either number one is stop at the previous local highs at around $24,000. Let's go ahead and mark that out. Okay. Um, and if we start breaking that, then I'm looking at bottom of the range at 22.6K. In addition to this bearish tilt, what else did we have? We had the loss of the 200 simple moving average on the weekly, which has been a very, very pivotal um, moving average just throughout Bitcoin's history. Right. But in addition to this backdrop, Sean, if I just take you on over to well, the main chart, um, and let's get on over to the monthly time frame. What happened on this month, right? We also had this little data point where we actually lost the monthly 21 EMA for the first time ever in Bitcoin's history. Every time we've taken out the monthly 21 EM EMA, we've held it, right? This is the first time in Bitcoin's history that we've actually broken down underneath it. And so like we have all of these little tiny bearish signatures telling us that, hey, we could put in another local low on these higher time frames, right? Um, and now, now, with all of this, we've been going over the bearish backdrop, Sean, but I, have, I found something else today. Okay, now this is the something else that I found. I have the 21 EMA on my chart and the 10 simple, right? If I take you on over to the four day time frame, now we did close a four day candle um, today. All right, so I was specifically looking at how price closed relative to um, the, the dynamic indicator, oops, there's a lot on this chart. So let's hide everything. Let's fix my scale because the dynamic, Sean, has been one of our bull run triggers for Bitcoin, mm -hmm. right? I was I wanted it to hold. <laughs> I wanted it to hold. So let's turn on the mango dynamic. Let's see where we closed and we close slightly underneath yeah. it, right? Let's let's go and get the proper data. The close came in at around twenty five thousand nine hundred and thirty four dollars. And the bottom came in at around twenty five thousand nine forty five. Honestly, this entire price action is reminding me more and more and more of two thousand and twenty September October region. Like everything now, even even the macro setting, where initially that didn't match up, guys, because back then stocks were rallying like crazy, and everyone got bored of crypto, and a lot of people from the crypto community switched on over to trading stocks. Well, now you're seeing the same story there too, right? Stocks are going crazy, right? We we have um, Nasdaq looking sensational, SPY looking sensational, um, Nvidia making new highs. I think Apple, Microsoft made new highs yeah, yeah, as well, yeah. and um, crypto is boring, right? And same story, guys. Four day dynamic had been uh, was we were chopping around the four day dynamic, but not seeing continuation to the downside. Oh, this right? part right yeah, here. Yeah, I remember this price action viscerally. Like I I I, I know this chart like the back of my head, that entire region here. Oh. Um, so it's a very similar story. And again, um, I still think like while we're getting that downside move, we're not getting the flush down yet, even though I'm waiting for it. I still think, oh no, I'm still playing for that move to $42,000 guys, okay? Even though I've been bearish for the past two months now, I've been bearish only for this leg down on the weekly time frame, And now we're sitting on the weekly dynamic and um, time is running out for the bears. Time, time is running out. I'm still being patient. I'm still being patient. It's getting difficult, but I keep reminding myself that this is what Bitcoin does. It makes it difficult. But hey, I'd rather buy higher than um, just buy in the middle range. So if it, Bitcoin decides to move up here, I will start buying at those levels we discussed. We can talk about that, um, Kusha, towards the end of the video, but still waiting for the down leg. Yeah, so we're still waiting on the down leg. Price is being stubborn here. The bears are not seeing much follow through, but these are all little nuggets in their favor right now, right? So we've lost the dynamic as well. And that's why, once again, what are the downside targets? We're looking at the 24K region, 
Okay, let's actually get on over to the weekly. I think we can mark out those regions very well. How do you not buy this, right? We could yeah, wick yeah. down though, and since it was about this time in the week, that's why I'm being patient, um, because I've been looking for 23k, 23.5k for so long now. If I just like capitulate over here and buy here, and then it comes down, I'm just gonna hate myself. I'm like, hey, Sean, you won't be mango. So again, I'm, I'm sticking to my rules, and I'm gonna essentially buy lower here or buy higher here. It's really easy to buy about 28,000 guys. However, now, based on what you showed me, Krisha, we could look to buy if we start closing two four-day candles above the yes, dynamic, right? I agree. So I think, I think now with so much time being passed, as we, as we inch closer to the end of the month, around um, three four-day candles, guys, is 12 days, okay? 12 days and we're sitting towards the end of the month, right? We're going to be sitting on 26th of June and we'll be here. I think at that point, the move towards the downside is kind of negated and I'll start positioning I'm in agreement there. Um, completely in agreement. Um, and so that's the thing. So if we, so I'm keeping this, I'm keeping the criteria, honestly, guys, very simple. We take out the wick low. We've take out this lowest wick right here of this range. Uh, the low comes in at around 25,350. I'm saying down we go. Like I said, we're looking for the next local low on this chart. I'm looking at $24,000 going all the way down to around $22,000. Okay, now we've gone over the criteria in the previous videos. But now in addition to this, why I really, really like your thesis in this entire thing being invalidated if we get over the four day dynamic is because now if I just take you on over to just uh, let's clean out everything okay all the lines I want you guys to notice we're about to get a bearish cross on the 10 SMA and the 21 EMA on the four day time frame historically every time we've gotten a bearish cross on the four day time frame okay doesn't like once again um, like many of the higher time frame indicators this does not happen too often all right but when it does happen it does um, it then what succeeds it is a uh, is a move to the downside all right. But there have been instances now in the past where these things have sort of gotten Ooh, negated. Could you zoom out for a second? So we got a, we got the kiss on the 10 SMA for, uh, and 21 EMA, right? Yeah. Look, look back here again, guys. Yeah, there we Similar go. Similar story. There we, we go. We chopped um, 2008, uh, sorry, 2020, October-ish, right? We, right here. Yeah, 2020, we chopped around the four-day dynamic and we had a similar equilibrium between the 10 SMA and the 21 EMA on the four-day time frame, right? And again, you can see that we did not get that move towards the downside, the flush that everyone was expecting back there. I remember back here, everyone was expecting 6K retest again because the price action looked really, really bearish, right? But hey, um, again, if you look at how the market decided to play it, as soon as you close above these highs over here, Mark was like, F that, this is done. Everyone who was waiting for the downside move, everyone, all the smart traders said, we are invalidated, we have to play this to the upside now, right? That's what smart traders do, guys, right? They are willing to say, I am wrong, and they look for the next move where they can be right. Everyone was positioning for that downside move, right? But then, you had market bullishness across the spectrum with SPY, NASDAQ just going nuts while Bitcoin wasn't going down. In fact, Bitcoin broke up. So th the entire sentiment of the market just flipped and we just drifted up. I think we're gonna see something similar. I think we're gonna see that July or August. So let's, ready. so let's give them the criteria, okay? So when does that really happen in the current juncture of the market? Okay, let's just fix our scale quickly, get into this price action. I'm going to just knock off everything, zoom in. We get over that little kiss right there at around $26,650. You guys want to note this down, note it down. $26,650. If price ends up doing something like this, right? We close over that entire, both that, that entire cluster. Think of what happens there. We close over the 21, close over the 10 and the dynamic. Yeah. Okay. So we take back all three regions. That is the invalidation. Keep it very simple for yourself. That's the invalidation for the bearish play, okay? And that's the early entry for the bullish play. Yeah. But the confirmed entry for the bullish play, in my opinion, is still right above here at 28,000, right? So you can kind of play it like, okay, I'm gonna um, split my position into two positions where I get half above the level Krisha just mentioned, uh, 26,700, ish and then the second half at 28K. You could even do a three split where you say, uh, I'll enter, over here on at 26.7 then i'll enter my second position here i look for a higher low and enter my third position here right so you could enter your third position here or even like this guys over here the thing is you should be price agnostic as to um where you're entering you just want price to go in the direction of your trade right i know it's difficult i know we all like to buy lower because there's more edge on the trade but when you're trend trading for a bigger move 
just just buy confirmation but you know you're paying for insurance there you go so that is the potential upside trade given that we um well we we hit those invalidations and start moving up okay as far as downside trade is concerned you guys already have our input on that everything remains status quo watch out for today's fomc meeting of course we'll be covering the important updates that is thrown at us at the meeting and we'll cover it in tomorrow's video sean is there anything else that you want to wrap up with today yeah um just just be careful of volatility in in regards to the meetings guys yesterday cpi uh, drop i just literally got off my computer i didn't trade anything i know a lot of people probably got caught in that volatility i suggest not trading any of these events today's j power event is going to come out it's going to have volatility again any move to the to the upside don't get for more ish guys in fact yesterday's video we talked about how we could test the 10 sma on the weekly and still see a rejection right wait for candle closes wait wait for your weekly candle closes wait for your 40 candle closes to say that hey market has now begun to accept prices at so and so levels right we're not there yet don't let the dailies sway your mood boom now there you have it um yeah and i hope you guys enjoyed this video today if you did make sure to smash that like button and if you want to keep up with the latest mango juice hit the subscribe and we will see you in the next update with this trade safely trade stress-free trade mango way trade the easy way ciao you guys ciao